Hey there, it's Anna. Welcome to the garden. It is a beautiful August day today. Oh my gosh, we actually got 60 degree Fahrenheit weather this morning, which is like crazy. Um, and I'm feeling the fall vibes. I'm ready for it. And I thought I would plant out a couple of the seedlings that I got started earlier um, and then also plant a few more seeds as well. So let me show you what I'm doing. So I have actually just yesterday, if you've been following along, you know, I started um, some ornament ornamental peppers. These are like those little um, kind of like they're like little black round um, black peppers. Uh, really cute for fall and Halloween. I started these in July, I think. Um, and so I just potted these out yesterday. I'm not entirely sure if they're going to produce a full pepper plant by Halloween. That seems like that might be a little bit of a stretch, um, but I'm encouraged to see like they look really happy and healthy and they're growing really well. And so I potted them up one into this pot here. And then I actually did a few in this pot. Um, this one I'm not quite sure about, but these two look good. Um, and you know, if I wanted to let them really grow for a long season, I would probably put them in bigger pots. But since we're really, I mean, we're pushing like, this is that mid August, um, not really end of August, mid August. And so we really only have like, you know, about till the end of October. And you buy these peppers, you know, um, in like the little quart size. Um, container. So I think those will be fine. And then I have some green onions that I started that I'm going to pot out that are little seedlings. And I'm also going to sow a couple seeds. So I'm going to sow in the green onions that I have started. And then I'm also going to put in a few, these are just like white Lisbon um, bunching onions. Same as the bunching onions that I got up there. Those are Tokyo long white. Um, these are the white Lisbon. And I'm gonna put these um, just as like a second succession. So I'll do a row of the ones that I already have started. And then I think I'll plant in a row of these um, from seed. Even if it warms back up, it shouldn't be an issue as far as the germination temperatures. Then I'm gonna do um, some carrots as well. These are coral carrots, a really vigorous, um, nice growing carrot, 75 days. So we'll see, I might get some of these this fall. Um, and they should be really good. And they're um, a nice, they resist splitting, eight to nine inch carrots. We'll just throw a few of those in. And then I'm gonna start some peas too. And I'll talk more about these once I'm getting them started. Um, Cause they're actually gonna get started inside under grow lights. Cause I think it's still a little hot out here, but let me show you where the bunching onions are going and that situation. So we are over here in this kind of part shadish bed um but once the trees leaves die back it'll be very much sunny here and my plan is to do bunching onions down the center line so these are the ones that i started in june um, i could probably come in here and trim the tops as well and i may do that before i plant um, a lot of times it helps to encourage a sturdier plant if you trim them a little bit um, and the, but i'm going to do them down the center and then i'll plant uh, the seeds kind of right along uh, with them. And then I think I'm gonna do a row of the carrots here, just a small row, because along the very back, I actually want to plant in some Swiss chard. Um, and I may do that today too, I may not. I'm kind of still hardening off those seedlings and I just, even though this is a little bit of part shade, I don't wanna overwhelm them. We still are in August, temperatures can get intense and I don't, right now they're in really full shade. I just, I don't want to risk ruining my seedlings um, by burning them. So I may wait on planting the Swiss chard out back. This is pretty close planting. It's pretty intense planting. Um, I just have small beds. And so I end up pushing the limits a little bit, um, but the bunching onions will take a while to get going. And um, then the Swiss chard will grow up. The carrots will go down. Hopefully it'll all work out. <laughs> That's the plan anyways. So let me get Okay, so I went ahead and planted in all of the little starts. They look pretty bad right now, but I think they'll um, perk back up here quickly. And then I sewed in 
the next succession uh, right kind of in and among them. The nice thing about bunching onions is you can sow them pretty close together and then you know as you're harvesting them that kind of thins them out i kind of have the same strategy a little bit with the carrots i sewed them in front here i tried not to sew them too heavily which for me is always <laughs> a bit of a challenge um but i'll kind of thin them out as i go and i just kind of kind of work them into the soil a little bit i'm going to do one row of lettuce in the front see if I can fit it in. As I said, the Swiss chard in the back here, and I decided to leave space um, between the on onions and the Swiss chard, because both of those are sort of long, more long-term crops. Like I know that the bunching onions and the Swiss chard will both actually, if I leave them, overwinter and come back in the spring and grow into the summer. So I don't want to overcrowd those because I don't want to run into an issue if I want to keep the plants going um, where they're too close together. And then I left some space by my arch trellis because I am hopefully going to plant in some peas. And then um, I also left a little bit of space at the end because I want to put some collard greens over at the end. At least that's my plan. I've got a few starts that can go in there. So that's the plan for that. Let me show you now my um, situation with the peas, where I'm gonna get them started. I actually have this 60 cell tray, um, and I don't think I'm gonna do 60 <laughs> peas, but I, cause I don't think I need that many, but I do need enough peas to go over here on the trellis on each side. And then I'm also gonna plant some peas in this grow bag. Um, so I can do quite a few in there. So I'm gonna fill this up with a bit of soil, and then I'm gonna put one pea into each cell and cover it and then i'm going to bring it inside and put it under grow light peas are not going to germinate in like the 80 degree temperatures that i have um 80 90 degree temperatures that i still can probably have this time of year i'm not you know 100 percent. They, they might um they might do well but they usually don't like like every time i tried to just like grow them out in the fall they'll they'll get started but then they'll like just get kind of like leggy and weird and um, not be like a really robust plant. So I'm hoping this way I can at least get them really germinated and going, and then I'll plant out really sturdy seedlings maybe in a few weeks, and by then we'll be getting into September, and hopefully it'll be cool. So let me get these started. I'm gonna do a first little bit of soil, put in the seeds, and then do um, more soil on top. Um, peas do need to be planted a little bit deeper. They're a bigger seed, um, so you don't wanna plant them just um, like on the surface or anything, they need to have a little soil um, over top of them. So that's my plan for doing them in the tray. And as I said, just one seed per cell because these cells are really tiny. Um, so if I put more than one seed, I think it'd be way too much. All right, so that is the peas all started. And as I said, I'll just gently kind of mist over them, put a, um, a cover on it to help them germinate and then I'll keep them under grow lights for a few weeks and I'll show you guys when I'm planting them out here um, so you can kind of see how that works. Uh, but I think that'll be perfect. And then I have all these other um, openings over here. So I did want to start a few more things like maybe for my green stock for over the winter and the fall. Um, so I may come back in and put some more soil in here and plant this up. I'm just not quite sure yet what I need more of. Still trying to kind of figure out this transition into some of these fall things, but it feels good to have the peas going and I'm excited to see how this goes. I know that peas aren't typically one that people really talk about like liking to be transplanted. Um, you know, there's, you'll hear a lot of different things about that kind of stuff. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's great. Like if you have a, the right situation where you can direct sow, um, then go for it. Like if that works better for the plant, that's amazing. What I've just found for me, um, I'm in zone 7A, I'm in Virginia. My last frost is October 30th ish. And I have found that every time that I've tried to direct sow peas in the fall, either it's been too hot and they haven't gotten going and they've just, as I said, gotten weird or I start them too late and then it just gets so cold that they aren't able to do anything and then that kind of doesn't work either. So that has been my experience and now I'm going to try to see if I can have a happy medium and get them started inside and it just may work better even if transplanting peas isn't usually ideal. If it's the only way that I can get happy pea plants or decent pea plants then that's what I have to do. So that's kind of my um, logic for it. 
anyways, as I said, I'll keep you posted. Um, definitely follow along on Instagram too, where I kind of give more like day to day updates. Um, yeah. And I hope you're having a great day in your garden. Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.